My name is Claire and I'm a current doctoral occupational therapy student with CSC. Um, today I'm here to talk to you about the do's and don'ts in hopes of improving your sleep quality and sleep hygiene. So to begin with, do make sure you're setting up your sleeping environment for success. We want clean sheets, we want you to make your bed more frequently, we want you to set that environment to a cool temperature. Somewhere between about 65 and 72 degrees is that just right spot that our bodies need to help us fall asleep. Don't drink any alcohol or caffeinated drinks right before you go to bed. These should really be stopped really mid-afternoon in order to um, set up your body for a great sleep. Do find a warm or calming drink like tea or um, whatever drink you like to have right before you go to bed that doesn't have caffeine and it's not an energizing drink. Um, find some tea that helps relax you, really take your mind off of things. Do invest in a sleep journal or a diary. Right before you go to bed, you know everybody's thinking, what do I have to do the next day? What needs to be done? What do I need to get accomplished? Write all of it down before you go to bed. That way you're not thinking in the middle of the night, oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget to do this. I'm gonna forget to do that. Write it down. That way when you wake up, you can reference it and you know how to start your day. Do engage in something that's relaxing and really helps your mind wind down. So anything that's reading a calming book, listening to some noises that helps you relax, doing some yoga stretches, meditation, mindfulness, anything like that, that gets your mind kind of calm and relaxed. We want you to engage in that. Don't do any physical exercise that's strenuous or anything that'll get your energy levels up and ready to go about anything. Make sure you're doing that kind of in the mid afternoon as well, right? We don't want you to do that right before you're trying to go to bed. Um, do engage in setting up a consistent nightly routine, right? So we want you to do something every night that you get into the habit of, nothing that's too elaborate, but just taking a warm bath, reading a book, then doing a puzzle, watching your favorite show, anything like that. So your brain can kind of start to make those connections like, hey, we do this every night. So maybe that means it's time we're um, trying to go to sleep and it's time to wind down. So to go along with that, don't watch or read anything that's super suspenseful or scary because that'll just make you more anxious, more stressed, and it'll be more challenging for you to go to bed. Do kind of set up those night lights around your room, in the hallways, in the bathroom. Don't turn on any bright lights if you do wake up in the middle of the night, right? We want your bodies to stay asleep, stay relaxed, and turning on those bright lights just isn't the best option. Um, if you can't fall asleep, do get out of your bed within 20 minutes of trying to fall asleep. Go to another room, make some tea, read a book, do a puzzle, anything to get you relaxed and more in the mood so we can go back to sleep. Try not to sleep in your bedroom for nap time during the day. Try to save your sleeping environment just for sleep, right? We don't want to associate that room with much else. So try to take your naps in a different spot. Focus on if you don't sleep as well the night before. Do not take naps throughout the day the following day. I know it's tempting and easier said than done, but um, try to limit those naps to about one the following day. That way your body is really tired and can get that sleep the following night that it missed out on the previous night. Um, so yeah, those are all the tips I have for right now. Stay tuned because I will be posting more tips and tricks and do's and don'ts for everything else within our daily lives. Thank you.